Well, today's a little different. Is that okay? Yep. Today's di- last week was Resurrection Sunday. We celebrate. How many here know that you and I, is, it wasn't just a one-time event. It's an ongoing event that we continue to grow in. The resurrection life isn't something that just happened. It continues to unfold as we continue to grow. And we sing songs this morning like, how many, how many believe with me he is for you? I mean, I don't want to just wish that. I don't want to just hope that works that way. I like to know that it is that way. I don't know about you. When you know that he is for you, isn't there great confidence? Isn't there great confidence when you know that he is for you? And, and I'm setting you up here, and I'm going to ask you a few things. How many have heard of the Apostle Paul? Paul, Paul? Paul would say things like this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. We'd all go, woo! I love to preach that verse. And he would say things like, I've learned in whatever state that I've been in, good, bad, a bunch, not enough, to be content. And then he would go on to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he would say things like, my sufficiency isn't in myself, but it comes from him. The ability, the sufficiency, the life that I live is in him. Isn't that good news? We'd all shout on that, don't we? Then he he talks to different places and different places. And he always starts off with grace and favor. And and he tells Peter, "Let, let let that continue to multiply. Let that divine nature, let there be a fire rise up inside of you and and live the life that God called you to live. Don't let anybody cheat you or rob you or steal from you. Woo! And we're all, yay! Run on on. Isn't that good? And I'm I'm setting you all up because that's the Apostle Paul. But yet, I want to share with you something today that isn't one of my favorite places to read. But I think it's, he's, how many here like transparency? Because I think today there's a lot of people that are hurting. A lot of people that are struggling with questions. There, there's a lot of people that are, and I'm going to say it this way, their hearts are heavy. A lot of people that, that there's questions going on in here. And, and a lot of times a, 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 a problem is just an unanswered question. An unanswered, what's your, usually what's your question is, they have a, I have a problem. Well, what's your question? If you think about it just for me, you'll get a company later. But, but I find there's a lot of people, even, in, even in, we're redeemed and we're loved. But yet I still see people that are stressed. Still people that are unsure. Still see people that are, that are, that are, that are whatever. And I'm not picking on that. But when, there, or there's people that are hurting or people that, there, there are things that happened to them yesterday, they can't let it go. Or things that are happening, you know, and, I, and I'm always reminded, this has helped me so much. In Luke chapter 13, they come and ask Jesus, did, did these people have all this stuff happen to them because of some, their sin in their life? You ever heard that? They're on their way to church and they all got their heads cut off. I hope that didn't happen coming here today. But, but there's people going, they were, they were going to do a righteous thing. We're going to church. And on their way to church, a whole bunch of tragedy happens. And they ask Jesus, and then another one was a tower fell on them. Same, same verse, 13, chapter 13. And, and, and you've heard me say this before, but it's in my heart today to set this up because Jesus says this. He says, no, absolutely not. But he says, was it because they had sin in their life? <sighs> now, a lot of us today, that'd be a good one. We could preach that. Yeah. Oh, bro, let me tell you. That's all I'm going to say about that. But my point is, Jesus says, he says, no. But unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Now, that might sound, when I'm going to say this out here, it's saying, he says, Jesus says, if you, if, you, if you don't change your mind about how you see God, this is going to eat you up. If you don't change your mind or have a change of mind, this is going to, this is going to eat you Remember I talked about this earlier, we have an incorruptible seed. This is going to corrupt every way you think and every way you do because you think God's doing this. And you want to keep blaming him and fighting him and he's your excuse. And Jesus said, no, he's the answer. He's the answer. And I want you to see that he's the answer. But the world is so much, doesn't get to that part because they see the problem is so big. And we've capitalized on sin and made big things out of sin. And Jesus said, it is a, God said, it is a big deal. You know how big a deal it is? I sent my son. 
And I sent my son to take every, to be made sin so that you and I could be made the righteousness of God. And, and God even says this, I'm not giving you some cheap knockoff uh, uh, imitation of it. I'm giving you the real deal. I'm going to give you my righteousness. And I don't know about you, but when God gives you what's his, where do you go beyond that to get that? I don't know about you, but I'm going to sit there and say, you know what? I received God's righteousness, not because of how good, how great, and how wonderful I am, but because of his love for me. See, I got to get out of the, I got to get out of the first person I and get to the third person he. I had a revelation. And I'm not picking on that, but sometimes we got to see it's he, he, third person. How do I know? Think about this. This is, this, this brings tears to my eyes. There's, there's three, there's three people on the cross. You ever heard of three people? Who was in the middle? Jesus. I'm going to give you a little story. This isn't my story, but it's a good story. Three people on the cross, and, the one, and, the, and he says, the one guy says, hey, if you are the Son of God, get us off of here. And the other, the other, the other guy says, listen, don't you even fear God? Don't you even awe and wonder? We, we are justly justified in what we did being here today. But this man, this man has done nothing. Think, and, I, and I picture that Jesus, Jesus, watch this. Just as those men were guilty of condemnation, no different than we were. And Jesus, who was innocent, says, I'll take, I'll take their guilt. I'll take their condemnation. So we can go to Romans chapter 1. It says, there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Right. Whew, that's a good verse. And by the way, Paul said that too. I haven't even got to my sermon yet. We're going to go quick here. Then that, then that other, the other guy on the cross says, Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now, I don't know about you, but he didn't have a, he didn't have a, a revelation of the understanding of God's grace or God's righteousness or all these things. He didn't come in and say, no, I have a full, re-. all he saw and recognized that he was the son of God. That's right. Amen. And he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And what did Jesus say? Well, until you get the doctrine of understanding and the, of, the, of the justification by faith doctrine and get that all lined out, you can't come. Until you understand, until you understand the hermeneutics of the uh, uh, presumpositionalistic explanation of the circle of the, or the, ro- the the globe is not flat; it's round. I don't, I'm making that up, but my point is, he didn't give them all kinds of stuff. And I picture this story how I see this picture and how I how I read it and how I saw it is think of the day when, when all that gets done and then he shows up in heaven. He shows up and he, he goes, "What are you doing here?" And the guy goes, now picture this. Now, this isn't my story. I'm repeating this story, something I heard. And he goes, and he, and he walks in, and he shows up. And the, the man, on the, 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 the man on the, that was on the cross that said, and Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Remember that? Now, here's where it gets amazing. This is how simple the gospel is. This isn't complicated. And the guy goes, how'd you get here? Well, I don't know. And then they dialogue back and forth. And now he kind of like the blind man, how'd you get here? I don't know. All I know is that he said to him, I could see and I could see. Right. Want to go meet him? Yeah. And, and, and I picture it like this. He said, I don't know. But, all, all, but the man in the middle, the man on the middle of the cross, he's the, he said that I could come. Yeah. And that's why I'm here today. Yeah. And I know that might sound really facade but 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 think about that for a minute out of all the all the things aside and everything done we get we get to experience that life because he made it so and as he made it so we become receivers of those things so he tells you all the time he's saying come are you weary are you tired are you worn out he says come to me and i will give you a real rest watch and learn and see how i do it that's where we're at today. I think we're continually learning and watching and seeing how he did it. And Paul would say amazing things that we would use that would transform the gospel and how we live life today. Amen? So I said all that to say this. I want to, go to, I want to read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 for a minute. And I might read some others, but I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And I want you to know this morning, is he for you? 
Through life's ups and downs, is he still there? Through some of the hardships and the hardships. Uh, I mean, how many of you have dealt with I mean, Don't raise your hand. We've got people that are stressed. We've got people that are getting anxiety. We've got people that are struggling to connect dots. We've got people that are maybe with relationships, maybe people with broken relationships, maybe people with some, some crazy, crazy events that they're trying to process or things that happened recently, things, people, things that happened far beyond. I don't know, whatever, but there's people living in this world. Not everything's just, just roses and, and kumbaya songs. I wish I could tell you that it was. I'm, I'm a for that. Let's go. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. And I'm not picking on that. But, but, but I'm amazed. And, and I'm amazed. But let me read. Uh, you guys go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And let me read 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Just a few verses. Don't have to turn there. <laughs> Watch how Paul opens up. Paul opens up to the Corinthian people. And I'm gonna, it goes for, for this is uh, chapter one. Just, just listen to me. He says, For you have been made pure, set apart in the anointed one, Jesus. And God has invited you to be his devoted holy people. He didn't say, I'm gonna make you somebody. He have invited you to, this is an offer to walk into. And not only you, but everyone everywhere who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and also ours. Then he would say things like in verse 3, may joyous grace and endless peace be yours just on Sunday. My Bible here, it says, may joyous grace and endless peace be yours continually from our Father God and from our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one. How many like continually? How many like continually? May joyous grace, endless peace. Whew, could the world use a lot? Could the world use some of that? How about you and I as believers? Trusters and, and receivers of God's goodness. How many here? How many here want to continue to allow that joyous grace and endless peace to continually invade in our lives? But how many times it seems like that's a that's like a, a I'd use the word pipe dream or that's like something over someday over there. I'm here to tell you it wasn't designed to be just for someday over there. It's meant for here to be right here and now. It's right here to be here and now. You know when Jesus, I'm, I'm, you know when Jesus said it is finished with a loud voice. It says he shouted with a great shout. And it said, it said that, the, that the veil of the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. Whew. Not so that he could get out, so that we could go in. And that veil into the holies of holies. And, and like I said before, when you were born again, you weren't born, you were born into the holies of holies. It's not you trying to get there. That's where you were born into and the veil was torn, not so that he could get, get, get out, but that so you could get in. And I invite you to step outside of that for a minute and look around and see that what has been finished and provided for you, he puts you at the finish line. Whew. How many people try to work to get there? Or work to stay there? Oh, I'm here now. I'm clean. I'm ceremonial clean. I did all the washings and the cleaning and all the sacrifice. I've done it all. Woo! And then you get there to go, I'm still not satisfied. See, it was never about what you had to do to get there to be satisfied. The satisfaction comes from realizing it's not me that does it, it's him that does it. And I'm trying to talk in, in simple terms, and I'm going to go over to Corinthians chapter 2 again. Chapter 1, 2 Corinthians. Am I talking? I'm getting first and 2 Corinthians. I'm crossing them over. Kind of like running them together. Can you see that? But I know where I'm at. I might not be saying it right, but I know where I'm at here. Uh, ha, ha, now y'all laugh at me. You know when Dave said, did Dave said I can go an extra hour today? He didn't hear me going woohoo because I was watching the audience to see, <laughs> to see their remarks, their response. Uh -huh. And everybody was like, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see Dan in here. <laughs> oh, you guys, don't laugh at it now. Don't get too worked up on me. Don't get too worked up on me. Got all day. Did you hear that one back there? The only time someone said keep going was on deer hunting day. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> day I get to go. <laughs> Anyhow. Holy Spirit help us. From Paul, from Paul to God's called ones, his church in Corinth, I have been chosen by Jesus Christ to be an apostle according to God's perfect plan. 
Our brother Timothy joins me in writing to you and to all the holy believers. What does he call them? Holy believers. Are you, a, are you holy? He made you holy. Isn't that good news? We could camp on that for the whole year. It's not, a, it's not just a feeling, oh, I feel holy. It's a knowing that makes the difference. And how it got done because you were born. You think about it, you couldn't go beyond the veil unless you were ceremonial clean and sanctified. So when Jesus, when that veil was torn, it was saying, the price has been paid so you can come boldly to the throne of grace. It's not you trying to get yourself clean. The price has been paid and I cleaned you. See, I'm getting sidetracked again. So many times in life, we try to build a bridge to God to impress God. And it was never about you and me building a bridge. It was always about him building the bridge to us. Always. Continually. And as we see how that bridge got built, we get the opportunity to go across that bridge and be in union with him through Jesus Christ. Whew. Isn't that good news? Mm-mm-mm-mm. Man, who you're holy through through the Roman province of Asia. Then he goes on Archaea, and he goes, "May may watch this. Here we go with the stuff we sang about this morning. May undeserved favor and endless peace be yours continually." Didn't we read that just a minute ago in another chapter, another place? What is Paul? What is Paul's Paul Paul's heart and Paul's deal is that may you have undeserved favor and endless peace. Be yours continually from our Father God and from our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. Where does this favor and peace come from? From Father God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father God and our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Covenant Keeper. Jesus the man, Christ the Anointed One, who did it all and keeps it for you and me. Isn't that cool? God the Father, who loves you and me. Jesus, who's, who is part of the who made everything possible for a new covenant. And without Jesus, there is no new covenant. Without Jesus, we're still in our sins. Without Jesus, we're still unholy, unrighteous, undeserved. We are way out there and we are all in trouble. But it says because of Jesus, he says, may you have some, may you have undeserved favor and continually have peace in your life. And I don't know about you, I like to receive that a little bit more every day. In a world that's going here, there, and everywhere. I'm here to tell you, undeserved favor and peace continually be part of your makeup in life. Not something you work for, it's something you thank him for and receive. Oh, are you hearing me this morning? I'm setting you up. All praises, watch this, all praises belong to God and, and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. For he is the Father of tender mercy and the God of endless comfort. And I say that this morning, hear me. He's the God of what? Tender mercy. How many like tender? How many are like a tender loin? How many like something that is tender? You ever cook something? You know, I've told you I've been learning to cook here lately. I've been 50 years old. I'm learning to cook. I'm really enjoying. But I find that I just cook the same things over. Just find a different way to do it. Yeah. So women, I give my hats off to you for all the things you can come up with. <laughs> whew, whew. And, uh, but... But how many here, if we go, if you're in the hunting world, a tenderloin is like, mm, it's like, it's like anytime you were, you've harvested something and everybody's there, don't mess up the tenderloin. That's the good part. <laughs> don't mess up, even in a turkey, you know, there's a tenderloin. I didn't know that. <laughs> there ain't much meat there. But anyhow, that's not my point. But if you eat the turkey leg, the only way you're going to eat the turkey leg, you got to boil it down and put it in something else because it's going to be too tough. How many like their meat tough? Piece of leather. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> Ever done that? Now, if you like it that way, don't. Hey, we'll pray for you at the church, okay? But I find that most people like everything to be tender. They're tender. Whatever they eat, whatever they do, when you're talking to somebody, when you're, when you're helping somebody do something, it's tender words that they receive. Not the hard, rushed, dry words that you're chomping. You know, I'm going I'm to chomp on you today, buddy. You ever done that? But he says here, he's, he's, listen to this. All praises belong to, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he, is the fa for, for he is the Father of tender mercy. And the God, I love this, endless comfort. Everybody say endless. endless. Comfort. comfort. And I'm setting you up. 
This is all good, isn't it? I mean, I like comfort. Comfort means helper. Comfort means, comfort means, you know, you ever see those new Facebook emojis or alt, not emoji, what's the other, Snapchat? My kids send me something and it shows a picture of me and one of them's giving me a hug and it's going like this. When I tell them something, I'm like, oh my goodness. So I still pick the ones with the thumbs up or the, you know, the heart, you know, but it's like these little, I think it's my son-in-law that sends me those things. I pray for him. I got to get this little deal and he's like, then he gets these little things, put his head in there. Oh, Lord, Jesus, pray. <laughs> I'm just picking on him. He, he doesn't really send me those things. He sends me pictures of trucks, cars, doing burnouts. I went to his house the other day, and he's got this little 67 truck, nice truck, and driving around it. That tire looks good. That tire looks good. That tire looks good. And the one that does all the driving, I was like, there's no tread on that tire. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> I'm setting you up there, but I, I want you to see, I want you to see in your heart today, whatever you're going through, whatever's happened, good, bad, or indifferent, he is the God of endless comfort. And I want to minister that to your heart because right here in a minute, here's what I'm going to change. Paul becomes very trans, transparent here. Paul, the one who has all kinds of things of, of comfort, endless peace, and you're holy, and you're sanctified, and you're accepted, and, and there's been a price that's been paid. You've been righteous, and he says, he says, man, I've been going through some stuff. And I'm not here to pick on that, but I want you to see, he's going through some stuff, but his focus isn't the stuff. His focus is, yep, I've gone through some, he, can I read some of it more to you? Because I'm going through some stuff. But he starts off with, again, in that verse of three, he is the father of tender mercy and the God of endless comfort. Is that not encouraging? Do we need encouragement, exhortation, that he is the God of all comfort? He's tender. He's what I'm trying to do, just like with Jesus, change the way you think, or else this is going to eat you up. It's going to eat you up. And then he goes on and it says, he always comes alongside us to comfort us in every suffering. He always comes alongside us. Now, whether we recognize him there or not, guess what? He's there. And, and, and I say this because I used to hear this verse and heard this stuff preached in the King James, New King James, the Message Bible. Whatever. I used to hear it preached that God causes all these bad things to come across you so you can find some comfort so you can comfort some others. I've been in funerals where bad tragedy things happen. They said, God did this because he wanted them more with him than with you. Now, how's that going to minister to the group of people that are sitting there with lots of questions if they're being told God did that? Or did God cause this to happen because he wanted you to learn through that so you can comfort others in that? Now, I'm not picking on that. My heart, I probably was one of those at one time, maybe sometime. But as I've learned the transformation of what Christ has done in our lives, that in the midst of those things, it doesn't mean I have all the answers. In the midst of those things, I keep pointing people to Jesus. They keep trusting and relying and looking to Jesus. doesn't mean i got to have the answer, but I can give you one. He's the God of all comfort. He's the God of endless peace. And if we're going around saying, God did it to you, then, then what do we need to be comforting people for? Does it make any sense? I'm just throwing that out there. Somebody need to hear that. Don't, don't run me down. Oh, you guess you can. I just, my heart for you to see is this is much bigger than the problems in your life. And I'm not, but I'm not trying to make light of problems because I think a lot of times in our journey, we just think if we get super spiritual and we learn how to quote a whole bunch of verses, that all that stuff just goes away. And I'm not saying that doesn't help, but what I'm do saying is there comes a point where you, if you don't deal with things, it'll deal with you. And if you don't see how it was dealt with in Christ, it'll eat you up. <sighs> don't shout me down now. But, but how many here, in, in the word suffering there, one translation might say tribulation. What does anybody else about? You anybody got a different Bible? Say something different. One train, I found something about uh, suffering. One was deep passion. I thought that was a good definition. Sometimes suffering, we always say he's bad, but it's a, I'm suffering because there's deep passion. Paul would say, I have deep passion for them to come to Christ. And part of his suffering was they didn't see it. He even said, I wish that they'd just take me out. If it could just be me taking myself out and they get saved, I'd do it. But that's not where I'm going. But how many here, one of the definitions of, of, of suffering or tribulation is hard-pressed? How many here have been hard-pressed with things? How many people have been hard-pressed and compressed and stressed? How many here have had burdens? 
In the same, cha- in the same book that we're talking about here, in a few chapters later, Paul, Paul will tell you that the veil has been taken. When you see Christ, the veil has been taken out of the way. He's what he's saying. There's a lot of things going on, and, and I'm building on that. But here's where I'm going today, and I really, and I'm going to tell you where I'm getting to. I really struggle with this because I like to encourage and build and strengthen. This is one of my, in one of my favorite places, just t- being straight with you. Woohoo! Hey! In one of my favorite places, but I think there's great truths we can learn in this. And he says, he always comes alongside us to comfort us in every suffering. How many suffering? Did he say how many? Every. So that we can come along, watch this, so that we can come alongside those who are, who, who are in painful trial. And I, and I thought about that for a minute. Sometimes we go through things, but if we can take our focus and go beyond our feelings and look at what Jesus has done, we can take those traumas, those events, and we can use it and turn it around for the good of someone else. That's the power of the gospel. The power of the world would say, let's get together and talk about how bad it is. But the gospel says, you can turn this around because the Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and the resurrection life is in you. These things that have happened, you can turn around and not use it to beat yourself up, but you can use it to encourage and build others that there is hope, that there is life, that there is purpose, that you have a destiny. Life is not over. Are you hearing me? And it says, we can bring them the same comfort that God has poured out upon us. Oh, wow, isn't that something? And just as we experience the abundance of Christ's own sufferings, watch this, even more of God's comfort will cascade upon us through our union with Christ. And we can take that different ways. All I'm saying is he says, I understand the death, burial, and resurrection. But I understand the death and the burial. But I understand the resurrection is bigger. Amen. I understand. And what I'm trying to get you to see is when things are going through, when you're going through things and you're suffering through things, it says in Galatians that he became a curse for us by hanging on a tree. Everything that was held against us was nailed to a tree. Amen. You see, when I start to see that what he suffered and the things I'm going through, I can tell you that was on Friday, but Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming early in that morning. It's that day, and it's that spirit that I've received. It's that resurrection life. He was off, what's it, uh, Romans 4, maybe it says, uh, 4, 25, or it's right there at the end of 4, it might be Hebrews, but it says he was offered up. He was offered up for our offenses, but he was raised for our justification. So what it says here, when I see that, he was offered up for our offenses, we see the things that he suffered, we identify with that. But you, I also believe that when Paul was preaching, he was suffering because he was preaching this gospel. What I'm saying is he believed that there was a better way than the way he had learned it. And he was going around p- telling people, you don't need to have sacrifices and ceremonies and have to follow all these rituals. And, 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 and the ones that have, and think about the people that received Jesus never even heard about don't eat bacon or circumcision or all these different things. And then someone comes along and says, oh, you believe in Jesus? Well, now you got to get circumcised. You know, all I'm saying is there was things that, that, wasn't about, that wasn't about those things. It was about trusting and relying and seeing Jesus, not about not eating bacon. But yet, but yet and, I, and I used to pick on those Pharisees and I used to pick on them Jewish people, but I've learned this. They were doing their best to make the people the best of what they could be. The problem was along the journey, it didn't become about how good you could be. It came about, well, did you pray? Well, I prayed too. Well, how long did you pray? Well, I prayed longer than you prayed. Oh, and God, I thank you. I'm not like this girl. I'm not wearing a pink dress today. I'm wearing a purple shirt. And I pray longer. And that's how it became. And what was missing was the fact that we were just pointing out what people were doing right or wrong. But it missed the, here's the biggest thing. It says all of it was wrapped up in one word, love. It was just pointing out their defects and their problems. But yet in their heart, their heart was for people to see that, to turn to God. But what happened is there was never any deliverance in it because there was always a reminder there was always a reminder, but when Jesus came, he said he wiped that all away. And he gave us a brand, new, a brand new confession that we say about ourselves what God says about ourselves. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And Sandra, Sandra, you've been here all day. Everybody knows Sandra McCollum. I'm not going to pick on her. How many of you ever read one of her Facebook posts? How many? She'll tell you she's as transparent as I've ever seen in somebody in my life. And I'm not saying that, and I, I compliment that. Because when she goes through something, she wants to turn it around and say, hey, uh, all this stuff was going, I was down and out, I was about ready to, I was going to beat my husband with a ball bat. <laughs> she doesn't say that. But she gets out, but then she said, but then she said, 
she either got around some people or trusted in the good news and it changed and rearranged. And part of the transparency is she says, I went through some rough stuff. She just had one this week or something. It was, it was, it was, it was long and I was reading, but she shares in detail of the struggle. But then, but you know, the struggle was there, the suffering, but then she goes in great detail, the answer and how the answer came and celebrates what Jesus did. And I really believe this is what Paul's doing here. Paul goes into great detail because he tells everybody all these great things you've experienced, how life has been changed, but yet they're going through some rough stuff because of the way they did life was different now. And they thought this was the answer to everything, but they're still having some hardships. Whew. And, and then it goes on and watch this. If troubles weigh us down, that just means that we receive even more comfort to pass on to you for our deliverance. And, and it, it doesn't say that the, they come to bring more. He said, if there's more trouble, all I know is I'm going to keep looking to him. And there's going to be more comfort. And the more I receive the more comfort, I'm going to give that away to you. My cup runs over with comfort, and I'm giving more out to you. It wasn't that I'm going to bring these things on you so you can find more comfort. <sighs> this means that in the midst of these big things, he is the comforter. He's the sustainer. And you have the opportunity, think about this, you have, the two, you have the opportunity to camp there, whine and complain and remain, or you have the opportunity to take the, to take the comforter of the comfort that he's brought you and pass it on to somebody else so they don't have to go as far down or as far as struggling as you did because, because there's, been some, there's been some answers that have been answered that he's the God of all comfort. Now, a lot of us, that might not make much sense, but when you understand when you begin to grasp, grasp, grasp that he is com he'll comfort you. Yep. See, we're not talking about the problem here anymore. No. We're talking about the solution. Yeah. We're not camping at the campfire of problems. We're, camp out the, we're camped at the campfire that he is the way, the truth, and the life. I've had much and I've had little, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Can you give me five more minutes? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it says, if troubles, and it says, oh, I got to read. If troubles weighs down, just means that we will receive even more comfort to pass on to you. Watch this. For your pain to increase, for you to be more confused. It says, for your deliverance, not the movie. For your deliverance. How many like deliverance? Now, let me ask you, was that deliverance, here's what I'm going to reinforce. Was that deliverance already paid for? Was already provided. Oh, and, and what, we, what I'm encouraged to do is to recognize that, to camp there, that the price was paid for me to live a life from deliverance. I don't need to be addicted to problems. I don't need to be addicted to shame. I don't need to be addicted. If I'm going to be addicted to anything, I'm going to be addicted to his love. I'm going to be addicted to his mercy, his tender mercy, his tender grace. I'm going to be addicted to, in the midst of this, he is my comfort. In the midst of whatever is going on, he's my comfort. He is my comfort. Oh. And then it goes on and it says, for the, com for the comfort pouring into us, watch this, empowers us to bring comfort to you. Where does that empowering come from? By focusing on him. Does that go beyond your feelings? See, most people that are dealing with, we think comfort, that's feelings. You know, we have, have you ever heard of comfort food? Makes us feel better. But I'm telling you, Paul's saying, let's go beyond our feelings. It's, I, wanna, I want you to know some stuff. I want you to know some stuff. And it's the knowing that matters more than your feelings. Yes, I know your feelings are there. They're important. But I want you to know God's bigger than your feelings. He's bigger than the problems. He is the solution to all those things. And if you'll turn and look and rely on him, that's how, because that's what, that's what happened to me as I trusted in him. What he brought me to that bridge, it changed my life, is what they're saying, how we do this, instead of going, oh, it looks bad for you, brother. It looks rough. How many here have camped out there? How many get texts, texts after text, how bad it is? I had somebody yesterday that I know real well, God, God's left me. God's left me, left the building. And I always tell people, if, if you receive Jesus Christ, he never leaves the building. But because the circumstances of life were bigger, or other people have gone through. I just was reminded yesterday, he was more, he, I'm going to say, he was so captivated with the problems that he forgot the God of all comfort. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He was being, he was perishing, eaten up because all he could see was the problem. Now I'm not here to tell you. How many here have had problems? Don't raise your hand. 
We could all raise our hands. How many of us see the world in problems? Those around us have problems. Okay. Did I say five minutes? When did that start? <laughs> I, I'm, for, are we doing all right? Yes. Keep going. Watch this. For the comfort pouring into us empowers us to bring comfort to you. With this comfort upholding you, you can, watch this, you can endure victoriously in the same suffering that we experience. Now our, hope, now our hope for you is unshakable because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in God's comfort, comforting strength. I'll come back to that another time. Brothers and sisters, you need to know about the severe trials we experienced while we were, were in Asia. All the hardships, all the hardships we passed through. Watch this. This is Paul. Crushed us beyond our ability to endure. And we were so completely overwhelmed. Ever felt like that? Ever been there? We were so completely overwhelmed that we were about to give up entirely. Now, I don't know about you. You can't get more transparent than that. And that comes from a man that, got, that, got, that was knocked off a horse, met Jesus on the Damascus Road. That was the man that went around in the book of Acts that had just a shadow touched people's lives. The man who said, who would say things, who would say things like, I can do all things through Christ. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And here he says, I was overwhelmed and about to give up. Don't you out me on that one. He goes, I was about, I was overwhelmed and about to give up. It felt like we were, we were, we were, we, we, we had it. It felt like we had a death sentence written upon our hearts. And we still feel it to this day. But watch this next verse. It has taught us to lose our, our faith in ourselves and to place all of our trust in the God who raises the dead. Amen. What is he saying? All this stuff is going on, and I'm going to trust in his faithfulness to me. And when he says God who raises the dead, what is he saying? I'm, it's the resurrected life that I'm holding on to. It's the resurrected life that I'm attaining to. Yep, I felt like giving. Ever felt like giving up? Ever felt like just quitting all the things that are happening and going on in this world? He's the God of all comfort. If someone else tells me to pray, I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to slap him silly. And I want you to read, this is Paul, and he says, man, I'm about to give up. Can that, is that as transparent as it can be? What is he saying, man? We're having some hard, it's, Today is hard. The news of what I've just received is hard. The things that I just experienced, it is hard. And it makes me, what is he, he wants to give up on sharing this good news. Mm. And it goes on, it is, and he goes, but through this, he says, if I trust in myself, it's never going to work. If I depend on my willpower, it's never going to work. I get my Rocky Balboa shorts on, get my gloves, read all the books on self-help programs. And here I'm here to tell you, this isn't a psychological class here today. This is a Bible class about Jesus. The platform here is about Jesus. And I'm going to get to psychological stuff. All I'm saying is it's about Jesus and he'll change, he'll change your psychology. And, you know, and, and he goes on and he says here, we'll just read to the end here of the five chapters. He says, I felt like, and it goes on, it was taught... It has taught us to lose our faith, to lose all faith in ourselves, and to place all of our trust in God who raises the dead. Watch this. He has rescued us from terrifying encounters with death. And now we fasten our hopes on him to continue to deliver us from death yet again. He says, we've been delivered, but I'm going to be right back in it. But you know what? I'm, I'm counting on him. I'm trusting in him. And then he goes on and it says, and now, no, as, as, now watch this, this is a cool part. As you labor together with us through prayer, because there are so many interceding for us, our deliverance will cause even more people to give thanks to God. What a gracious gift of mercy surrounds us because of your prayers. So watch this, and we'll close. Paul, he builds you up, tells you who you are, tells you that life can be completely different. 
But then he comes around and says, you know what? There is some hardships. There is some broken hearts. There is some unanswered questions and things. And, and de he says, death, I wanted to give up and quit. And then he goes on and says, in those times wanting to come up, I, come to the, I came to the end of myself. I heard a testimony the other day. A guy says, when I came to the end of myself of trying to do it and receive Jesus, it changed everything. That's powerful to say it that way. And the man said he tried everything. And all I want to bring out, I say it was difficult, is because I don't want anybody, you might be feeling like giving up. You might have questions why. I'm going to tell you, he's the God of all comfort. And Paul says, in the midst of this transparency, I didn't just get out of this on myself. He writes to the Corinthians, it was your prayers for me that, made the, that helped make the difference. So, I, so part, of the, part of what I want to say is prayer makes a difference. When we pray for people, it makes a difference. When we pray for people, it can change the direction of people's future. It can change the direction. And he, and he, recognized, he recognized that he wasn't in this, this, in this gospel journey to change people's lives by himself. He was in it saying, we are in this together. And you might not be here with me, you, but you might not be going through what I'm going through. But your prayers have made a difference in my life. Because there was a time I wanted to give up. There was a time I wanted to quit. But those endless, continual, interceding prayers for us made the difference made the difference so a lot of times in life a lot of times in life it's not just what you're going sometimes we need to stop and just pray for others if you're having a rough time start praying for people things ain't going so good pray for others when you feel like giving up pray for others and then when you feel good thank god that there's somebody praying for you you know at this church alone abraham father abraham our missionary from uh across the i want to say india 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 big t india but he has a whole, I call it a whole tribe. He has a whole tribe of people that get together every day just to pray for this church. They just get together and they just pray. Uh, Shannon and Logan are missionaries in Africa. The same thing. They get together every day and part of their, part of their journey with the things that they do is getting all the people in their, in, their, in their local tribes to come and they pray. They pray for America. They pray for this church. They don't do just this church, but all the churches they're involved in. They pray for the people, the pastors. And some of you become friends with all those people. All I'm trying to tell you is don't ever, don't ever count prayer out. Don't ever count out God's goodness. Don't ever count out his comfort. And I share this with you today because Paul depended on one thing. It was God's faithfulness to him. When he felt like running out and quitting, he said, it's his faithfulness to me that makes all the difference. When I look back and see it's not me having to maintain and keep this bridge, it's seeing that he keeps this bridge for me, that empowers me to keep on going. That empowers me to keep on relying. And I encouraged, and, and I bounced around with this a little bit today, and it didn't, didn't go exactly how I wanted it to go, but it never usually does. But my heart has just been, I'll use the word grieved a lot lately because there's so many people that I've come across that are dealing with some little simple minute things. There's things people dealing with things they don't share or don't do or there's people dealing with all different 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 avenues of all different sorts. And I want to encourage you that in the midst of all those things God God still loves you. Amen. God still is mindful of you. In the hurts the pains as you as you look to him he will bring you comfort. As you trust in him, he will bring you tender mercies. How many like the word deliverance? How many like deliver? No, I, knowing that he's paid the price to deliver me means that even though this is stuff's going through, but I, but I am unshakable because I know he is the deliverer. Even though my feelings are trying to overwhelm me, I know that he's paid the price to deliver me. Even when I'm uncertain and my heart's broken and things are going blah, 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 all around here, I am certain, I am certain, I am certain. And Father, I thank you for your comfort. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for that bridge that you made to come to me. If you don't like the bridge, you made a ladder. He came down the ladder to come to you. You've been through some traumatic events. You've been through some things. I'm out here. Instead of using that as a negative, turn around for God's good and to bring comfort to other people to say, hey, listen, I might, you've been there, I've been there, but here I'm going to tell you, he's the God of all comfort. Let me pray with you. And that might, you don't have to explain the situation. Sometimes you don't have to have all the answers of, of all the, just, just, just have this one, have, point them in the direction of Jesus. 
And keep pointing to Jesus. Keep pointing to the veil has been torn. Keep pointing down to you're clean and close and you're, you've been made holy and you've been set apart and, you've got, and he's all about you. And you'll find that'll begin to bring comfort into your journey. Because you're taking your focus off of all the, all the rough stuff and you're starting to focus on him and he'll help guide you through the rough stuff. He says he can take what's rough and make it smooth. He can take what's crooked and make it straight. He says he can hold the water in the palm of his hand, measure the universe with the span of his hand. It doesn't, and, I, and I close with this. How many here need to be encouraged that he's their comforter? How many need to know that in the midst of all what's going on, I can trust in him and, and everything tells you you don't want to. I want to give up. You know how many times I want to give up on being married? No. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> but everything I said about that, is, it's about relationship. And the world and the enemy wants to always sever that relationship. Sean and I have I been through some ups and downs and back and forth? And every time I wanted to give up, forgive up, I'm going to tell you the times the things we went through made us stronger, yep. made us depend on each other more. I remember the time struggling. She grabbed me by the hand and, and went to praying like a prayer I'd never heard before. And I got up and I was ready to climb the Eiffel Tower upside down with my toes because, because she grabbed in there and said, hey. And she brought comfort. But they came through relationship of communicating with another. You look in the book with the Song of Solomon, chapter 4 said, There is nothing wrong with you, my bride. You are perfect. And that's a picture of us. Jesus looks, There's nothing wrong with you. And she's like, I'm dirty, I'm nasty, I'm skinny, I'm my hair. He says, There is nothing wrong with you. And when she begins to see there's nothing wrong with her, they can enjoy the relationship with one another. And just like God the Father and everything He's done, when we begin to see, the amazing things that he's done. We can enjoy that comfort. We can enjoy those things. Even though you might think you're dirty and nasty and all this other stuff. What if you focus on, he said, I'm clean. That's where I'm camping. That's right. Amen. He says, I'm holy. That's where I'm camping. He says, I can have deliverance. I'm, I'm, I'm going to thank him for that deliverance. Because I don't want to carry this pain anymore. I don't want to carry this hurt. I want to carry this confusion around anymore. I want to carry some confidence and assurance that he's with me and that, that I can live life through the midst of all of this. Find my stability again and live life. And, and when I come across these situations, I'm going to encourage people to keep looking to Jesus. When you come back from the military, you could either let it eat you up, some of the things you experienced, or you could turn around and encourage those that were going through the same thing you were going through, couldn't you? So you took it and said, you know, I'm not going to take it as a, as a Debbie Downer. I'm going to turn around and, and, raise G, and, raise, and make Jesus look brighter and brighter and point him in that direction. Same things with relationships. Same things with all of that. It can all be turned around. And that's what Paul's saying. I'm as transparent as can be, but I'm not looking on the death of everything. I'm looking on the life that's been dropped to me in Christ. And that's where you'll find your comfort. Stand with me this morning. Stand with me this morning. Thank you for your, for your over-the-top time with us. Huh. God is good. We sing that song. Is he for you? We sing the song even in the midst. There might be weeping, but there's also rejoicing. How many here, how many here, how many here this morning want to continue to go out and live life in Christ? How many here want to just live life knowing he is my deliverer? Not something wishful, something that sounds good, but have a knowing that it's been done. I encourage you to go about your week to receive what he has done for you with no strings attached. Amen? Amen? Father, I lift up each and every person to you this day. You know the hearts and the lives of each and every one of us. You know our ups and downs. You know our pains, our hurts. You know but there's people here, maybe they've been in a place where they want to give up. They want to quit. They want to just throw in the towel and be done. Whatever the situation's in, in any direction, Father, I pray that this, this time together, this message from, from Paul, would enc as he was writing into the Corinthians, that it would encourage us that all the things that he experienced and the transparency that he went through, that even in the midst of that, he said, I'm going to continue to trust in the one and only. I'm going to depend on his love for me. I'm going to depend on all that he purchased and paid for me. He's redeemed me. He's cleansed me. He set, my, he set me on a brand new way of doing things. And I'm going to continue to trust in that. And not only that, <laughs> I thank you, Father, for, for all. Paul says, I thank you. For, he says, I thank you for praying for me. And Lord, I pray in this room there would be people that would just, that would just embrace the opportunity to pray for one another. To pray for this one, to pray for that one, to, to pray for their friends, just to, just to say prayers, to, to, to bring comfort into their journey for their day. Doesn't mean they need to know everything about it, but just to pray over them. And Lord, I pray over each and every one of them today. 
I pray for their hearts to find, to, their hearts and their minds to find peace. I pray for their bodies to be healed physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Lord, I pray you for people living with direction and purpose, knowing that you are for them and not against them. I pray for people to be empowered, to be empowered by your comfort, to be empowered by your endless mercy. I thank you for knowledge and wisdom to go beyond their feelings, but that they would have a knowing and an understanding of all that is for them in Christ. And I thank you that they have an over-the-top week, an over-the-top life. And then for the days upon days upon days that you just continue to embrace and visit them in only ways that they would know how, how much their lives matter and how much you want to be involved in their journey. And I speak of shalom peace, a redeeming peace, a victorious peace. And as Paul would say, he causes me to triumph in all things. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen.